Welcome to this tour of BYU's Clinical Psychology Doctoral Program. I'm Dr. Chad Jensen, Director of Training in the Clinical Psychology PhD program. This tour is intended to give you a sense of our program's physical spaces. I want to give you an idea of what it would be like to be a student here, show you all the spaces where you might do your work, and give you a sense of some of the, um, the qualities of our program and uh, what it might be like to be here as a student. First, I want to say that we're standing in the John Taylor Building. This building is uh, was designed 50 years ago as a place where all the mental health professions could meet together to train students. So the beauty of this clinic is it's like a, a real functional clinic where you're going to see patients from the community who come here to receive psychological services. It's an important part of your training to be trained here at this clinic. We have clinical psychology, social work, marriage and family therapy, and communication disorders all in the same building. It's a pretty unique place. It's also well situated so people can come and park easily. We're sort of on the edge of campus. And it's a place where you're going to spend a lot of time during your training here on campus. I do want to say that students are the lifeblood of our program. So we hope that this gives you a sense of what it might be like to be here so you can get a sense of this is, if this is a good fit for you. Um, we wouldn't exist without students. So we really want to make you, um, make you aware of all the different benefits that we can offer to you and we want to recruit you to let you know that we want you here as a student at our university. Let me talk about just a few of the unique components of this building in specific. This building houses all of our faculty in clinical psychology. All of our offices are here. All the clinic spaces here also. So you have ready access to the faculty as you're seeing clients here in our clinic. The clinic has a wide variety of uh, technological offerings, video equipment to record all of your sessions, um, ready access to all the materials you might need to perform your clinical work. So in a minute I'll show you some of the spaces within the clinic, but I want to say um, that the, um, the synergy of all the different mental health programs working together is really one of the unique parts of our program, where we can consult with our colleagues in social work and marriage and family therapy and even communication disorders and we can collaborate with other professions in that way. Let me also say that we, um, that we have practica in this program for much of your time in our clinical psychology PhD program. You'll start in your first year seeing clients here in this clinic. You'll do assessments for the first full year. So you'll do eight total assessments in that first year. What that means is you're going to get really good at psychological assessment in year one. It also sort of helps you prepare for what it's like to do psychotherapy. So it's a little less intimidating than jumping in and doing therapy in the first year. So that first year is going to be assessment heavy and then in years two and three you're going to be here in the clinic um, doing uh, at, least, at least five hours of psychotherapy plus seeing one assessment per semester as part of your clinical training. This, uh, this clinic is really central to your training experience and as you get, uh, get better and more uh, developed in your skills, you're going to go out to the community and do additional clinical work in locations um, throughout the, the U Utah Valley and see sometimes even the Salt Lake Valley here in Utah. The next thing I want to say is that the, um, the clinic serves people from the community. So it is very much like a community mental health center. We see children and adults, people that span the spectrum of diversity. Um, we do see lots of Spanish speaking clients here, which is wonderful if you want to uh, practice doing providing clinical services in Spanish. And it's a wonderful place to begin your clinical training. Um, you also have strong support from the faculty. So uh, we're here to help you and your supervisors are close at hand to be able to mentor you in your clinical training. Um, as we tour the rest of the clinic, just keep in mind that all these, uh, all these spaces are supported by the university. We have strong support from our college and department, also strong uh, support from the university. So we're well resourced. You don't want for much in terms of the access uh, to equipment, um, technological capability, and space here at our program. So let's move now to the rest of the building to show you what the spaces look like. This is our student workroom. You'll spend some time here preparing to see your clients. We have lots of clinical resources as you can see on the shelf behind me. This includes treatment manuals, protocols for different interventions, assessments that you might use in your work. So this is a place where you can prepare to see your clients. You can write clinical notes. You can spend time between seeing clients here in the clinic. And this is right within the clinic space where you'll see clients. So this is not a place where you're going to spend the majority of your time. You'll spend that time in the research labs where we'll go in a few moments. But this is a place where you can spend preparing for your clinical work. Um, I will also note, we talked earlier about the first three years of your training. You'll start off with that assessment practicum. Years two and three are predominantly psychotherapy training. And then in year four, you get some experience with supervising other students. 
a supervised supervision model where you're going to have experience in providing feedback and viewing tape from other student therapists more junior to you. So uh, believe it or not, by the, by the end of your training, you're being prepared to supervise other psychologists in their work. Um, this room is uh, a great place to hang out as you prepare to see your clients, and you'll probably meet up with some of your colleagues in your cohort here in this room too. This is our play therapy room. Obviously, children like to come here. We see lots of children in our clinic. In our program, we have three emphasis areas. Uh, these are called major areas of study by the American Psychological Association. The first major area of study is child and family. We also have a neuropsychology area of study. The, uh, the last area of study is health psychology. We see lots of child uh, clients here from the community. Lots of them come for psychological assessment and psychotherapy. If you have interest in child therapy, this is a great place. We really do have a lot of resources available to train um, uh, therapists who want to work with kids. Um, these therapy rooms are uh, well appointed. They have all the audio and visual equipment that you might need. They do record all the sessions and those are used for supervision purposes. We have a really technologically advanced system to view those. Uh, you can view them anywhere from home. Uh, all of your supervisors can view them within the clinic. You can even do live supervision using that uh, remote recording system. This is another one of our clinic spaces where you can do both psychotherapy and assessment. Let me talk for just a moment about the training we provide in psychotherapy here in our clinic. We have supervisors who have a broad variety of psychotherapeutic orientations. The majority presentation or um, theoretical orientation is cognitive behavioral therapy, but you will see people from a variety of backgrounds, acceptance and commitment therapy, motivational interviewing, interpersonal psychotherapies, humanistic person-centered therapies, all those are represented in our faculty. And students have some choice of their supervisors. You'll rank order your preference for supervisors each semester. You may not get your top choice every year, but we try to make sure that you get um, exposure to the supervisors who, whose interests most closely align with yours. We also ask you to learn some new things. So when you're in training, you're not expected to come in with intact psychotherapy skills. We're going to train you to do these different forms of psychotherapy. And the process involves evaluation where we give you feedback about how you're doing and lots and lots of observation with the video recording equipment. I do want to say also that we value diversity, equity, inclusion highly in our program. We want you to feel like there's a place here for you. We have clients of diverse backgrounds, students from diverse backgrounds, different uh, ethnicities and races, um, sexual orientations, gender uh, backgrounds, all those different things are included here in our program. We want you to know that there's a place here for you. As you proceed in your training in the program, you're going to develop competencies a little bit at a time. And each of our clinical faculty are committed to helping you um, receive the training that you want to help you achieve your career goals. Our, our aim as a faculty is to help you to, to end up where you want to be professionally. So remember that this program is designed uh, to help you achieve the goals that you have for yourself. And we encourage you to think carefully about what it is about our program that aligns with your interests, and then what ways can we help you learn and grow. You're going to do some things you haven't done before, and that's part of the training in a doctoral program. This is our clinic materials room. Here we keep all the things you might need for clinical practice. This includes all the assessments you might use. It includes the charts for your clients. Most of the records are kept in our electronic health record system. Um, however, you might see some things like an assessment protocol that you need to keep in physical copy, and that's here in this room. Our health record is, uh, is a really well-developed program that offers you Lots of different ways to keep track of what's going on with your clients and your supervisors to tra track how things are going. Um, we've used proprietary software in the past, but we just recently moved back to an in-house software that has many advantages for training. Um, when you come to this room, you can check out things like toys for your clients. You might even yeah, use some things like uh, um, some games in your therapy, and all those things are available here. Our program has lots of uh, great resources. If there's something that you need for your clinical practice, we often have the funds to pay for it. One of the things to know about our clinic is that clients pay $15 per session and uh, unless they're in financial situation where they can't afford that, in those cases we can negotiate those fees. That $15 um, fee without, uh, without requiring insurance allows us to see lots of clients who otherwise wouldn't be able to access therapy uh, because they don't have adequate insurance to cover their treatment. So we see lots of clients who, um, who come from low SES backgrounds or otherwise have difficulty paying for their services those $15 accrue and allow you to, uh, to travel. 
So we are able to use that money to facilitate travel for research conferences or other clinical trainings that you uh, want to attend. The university has lots of resources for experiential learning. So you're gonna have opportunity to travel frequently to research conferences. We have many students who've traveled to two or more conferences every year, and that's paid for with university funds. So it's great that you don't have to pay out of pocket for those experiences. In this materials room, you'll come in and check out the materials and check them back in so that other students can have access to them also. Uh, we have lots of resources for clinical training here. I hope you get a sense that we're adequately prepared to give you all the experiences you need in your training. And then you leave the clinic and have experiences outside. So you complement these um, by experiences in hospitals, clinics in the community, um, private practice if you're interested in doing that. And the beauty there is that you can find something that's specific to your interests. You get to select those opportunities. So as you get into your third year, you're going to be thinking about which outside experiences do I want, which will help to balance out my training and prepare me for application for clinical internship. The clinical internship is a year-long experience at the end of your training. Our goal is to prepare you for the top internships in the country. Those help you to be prepared for the, the best career options down the road. The next stop on our tour is our research spaces. Remember, you're going to do lots of research as part of your training in our program. Some students ask, what's the relative time spent on research versus clinical practice in your program? And I would say our program is kind of right in the middle of the road, about half time in research and half on clinical practice. That's important because some programs have a much heavier emphasis on research and others de-emphasize research and much more emphasis on clinical practice. We're right in the middle. So we're going to train you to both do both research and clinical practice. I think that's really important because what sets you apart as a clinical psychologist is your research training, your research expertise. There's lots of other mental health professions out there, and they might get similar training to you in terms of clinical practice. But research expertise is what's going to set you apart from your colleagues. Now, these research spaces are designed for you to use at your leisure. You can come here to do your homework. You can eat your lunch here. We have a, lot, a strong lab culture where you're going to spend time with other members of your lab. And that allows for lots of research collaboration, time spent together, learning from more senior members of the lab. And these lab spaces are well appointed. They have all the things you might need to do your research. Lots of them have special research equipment. They have uh, computer equipment that you might need. And our job as faculty members is to help to facilitate your success in research. We have the major research milestones of the master's thesis and the dissertation. But all of our students uh, you know, publish stuff beyond those two major research milestones. Our goal is to help you to uh, publish your research and that publication is the currency of the realm and academia. So it's going to help you prepare for application for your internships, postdoctoral fellowships, and ultimately uh, uh, positions in, uh, in either research or in clinical practice. The important piece is that our model is a scientist practitioner model. So even if your goal is predominantly clinically focused, we want you to be strong scientists, to be able to produce research, to evaluate the research of others effectively, and to integrate research into your clinical practice. In these research spaces, um, you're, uh, you're welcome to spend much of your time here. So these are places where you're going to hang out a lot. I will also note that our location here on campus at the Taylor Building, and this, this building is called the Taylor Annex. They're right across the parking lot from one another. These buildings are sort of on the edge of campus, so the parking is very easy. There's a special graduate student parking here, which is really uh, a boon, and the, the parking fees for students here are far lower than they are at other universities. So I think that's a great uh, benefit. You don't have to walk a long way to get to the places where you're going to do your research. And most of our research spaces are centrally located. Each of our faculty members has a research lab with space for you to spend time with people in your, uh, in your, in your lab. You're also going to spend time with people in your cohort, uh, the students that enter at the same time you did. Much of that time is in classes. So you, uh, I like to think about our program as a, as a community, a strong community where people uh, collaborate with one another. Our atmosphere is, is not hyper-competitive, much, uh, much more cooperative in our approach to training. So you're going to get the support you need. You should never feel like you're in competition with others uh, to the point that it creates undue stress for you. And uh, there's lots of opportunity and resources for everybody within our program. Welcome to the Merkley Brain Lab. We study the effects of acquired brain injury uh, with the goal of identifying ways to improve recovery following injury. And we use a variety of methods here. Uh, we use neuroimaging analysis and neuropsychological assessment to evaluate cognitive and behavioral effects of injury. Um, it's been said that 
traumatic brain injury is the most complex disease in the, the most complex organ. And we also know that outcome following injury depends not only on the nature and severity of the injury itself, but also the nature of the brain that was injured. And so we have our work cut out for us. And we do have a number of projects and papers currently underway. For example, uh, focusing on structural changes following traumatic brain injury and uh, as they relate to cognitive functioning. Um, another one looking at symptoms of uh, mild traumatic brain injury or concussion, as it's sometimes known. And also looking at cognitive and psychological effects of intimate partner violence, which historically has been understudied and we're trying to change that. This is our BYU MRI research facility. Magnetic resonance, resonance imaging is an important research method that's used in psychology and lots of other disciplines. This facility is quite unique because it's a research dedicated facility here on our campus at BYU. We don't have a medical school, but uh, one of the advantages here is that we can use this facility exclusively for research. That allows us to have great flexibility in scheduling our scans. We don't have to compete with clinical demands on the scanner and it's a great place to conduct research. I do research myself at this facility, and my students are highly involved in that research. They work on projects exa examining things like um, how the brain influences dietary uh, decision-making, physical activity, behaviors, and how sleep influences brain functioning also. Other faculty members do research with traumatic brain injury. We've had some researchers who look at autism and how the brain functions in autism. So, there's a wide variety of applications of MRI research um, in, our, in our program in clinical psychology. When you come to do research here, um, you are expected to do some training, and that would include safety certification. And uh, once you're certified, you can actually conduct scans here independently, um, obviously with, the, with collaboration with a faculty mentor. So I invite you to think about ways that your research might be, um, might be might benefit from using MRI research. Even if you've not done MRI research in the past, there's opportunity for you to participate in research here. It's really a unique facility from a research perspective. It's one of the many facilities that we have for research on campus. We're highlighting it here in this video so you get a sense of the variety of uh, possibilities to assist you in your research. The MRI includes things like eye tracking software. We can even do EEG within the MRI. And the facility is an excellent facility um, relative to those across the country. I think it's really one of, uh, one of very few that's a research dedicated scanner with very low cost to do research. And many other facilities, you pay five or six hundred dollars an hour. Here it's two hundred dollars per hour for our uh, scans for research. So it's a, it's a great boon to our research and we hope that you think about uh, participating in MRI research. Hi, my name is Stephen Allen. I'm the manager of the MRI research facility and my job is to act as a liaison between student researchers and faculty. I'm an MRI physicist by training. I love MRI and MRI research um, and would be looking forward to helping you get your research off the ground at this facility. I'm standing in front of the Spencer W. Kimball Tower. This building houses the Department of Psychology. On the 10th floor, you'll find offices for faculty, a bunch of research space up there also for psychology. So our, um, our program, our psychology department, houses two doctoral programs, clinical psychology and general psychology. That PhD program includes areas in social, developmental, and behavioral neuroscience. So those programs um, have a close connection. We spend a lot of time together uh, with students and faculty in those programs. That would include colloquia in the department, department socials, all those things happen together with the full psychology department. You'll take a number of classes with those students in uh, general psychology. And um, you should also know that th those faculty members are going to teach a number of your classes. We haven't talked much about coursework to this point, but you should know that you'll take courses in lots of clinical top topics, psychotherapy and assessment. We also have a, a large number of courses that are in general areas of psychology. You'll take courses in social, cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, statistics, research design. All those courses are an important part of your training. As we come to the end of our tour, I would just want to say that uh, if you have any questions regarding the facilities at campus, um, all the different places you might spend, spend your time as a student here, please feel free to reach out to me as, uh, as the Director of Clinical Training. Just like you're interviewing uh, with our program, you're interviewing us. We want to make sure you have all the questions you have about our program answered. 
because we're not in person, it's important that you feel free to reach out and ask any questions that come up for you. We hope you, uh, you've enjoyed the tour. It's a, it's a beautiful setting here on campus, and we hope you'll consider joining us at BYU in our clinical psychology doctoral program.